This is B of C Live, the video and podcast series of Business of Cannabis. Find out all that we do at businessofcannabis.com. Coming up on BSC Live, we connect with Chris Walsh. He is the CEO of MJ Biz. Last week, MJ Biz announced that they were being acquired for $120 million by Emerald X, part of Emerald, which is an events and media conglomerate. We wanted to connect with Chris Walsh to talk about what that meant for MJ Biz News, events, and what it means for all of us about the MJ BizCon this fall. This is Chris Walsh from MJ Biz. Chris Walsh, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> well, sometimes the news is the news. And this uh, last week was one of those cases. Um, first thing one morning, I saw MJ Biz gets acquired. Tell us what that means, what it doesn't mean. It must be exciting times around your offices, remote or otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've been building this for almost 11 years as of May. You know, it would be 11 years. That's a long time. That's like 50 years in cannabis, as you know. <laughs> Um, so it's been, it's been a a labor of love. It's been a slog at times. It's been exciting. And, uh, you know, to, to, to find a company that that's around 10 or 11 years without going through something like this is rare these days. Um, but you know, I think the time was right. We, we are looking to take the next step as a company and you can only do so much right. Um, on your own. And that's what we're seeing play out across the industry. So what, what it does for us, uh, is basically gives us a deeper bench. We've got insights and guidance we didn't have before. Uh, work, you know, we're now being folded into this larger company, Emerald. You know, publicly traded uh, mainstream company coming in uh, and just determining that they feel comfortable enough getting into cannabis, uh, even though we don't touch it, right? Um, and uh, and that this is a major pillar of, of how they're trying to grow going forward. And I think that says a lot about where we are as an industry right now. We're seeing mergers and acquisitions left and right every week. There's another big one, right? Um, and now we're part of that. But uh, I think, you know, there's there's a couple ways to look at it. And and some people say, oh, this is the big corporate America coming in. And I don't, I, you know, I don't like this. Uh, it's, the, it's the outsiders. Uh, I understand those feelings. Um, if you do this right, though, it's really good. Um, yeah. Because we're going to have this expertise in basically doing what we do better, right? And that's what we're here to do is help the industry in different ways. And that's what we continue to, to plan to do. So they're bringing our whole team on. You know, the two co-founders are, are moving to the side, uh, stepping back from the business, Anna Cassandra, mm-hmm. after the transition. But I'm staying with the company in my current role, our whole leadership, our whole sales staff, our whole journalist team. Everyone is moving over um, because we know cannabis, right? So I'd have a much different feeling with, with the acquisitions you see where some company comes in, they really don't know the industry. They let everyone go and they say, ah, we can do this. That's not good for the industry, but I think this one is. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and I don't, I am of the mind that you are, I think, that this is really an important step in the normalization of cannabis as a pillar industry in America and, and around the world that a company like Emerald says, this is one of the pillars we want to dive deep on and we're going to go get the biggest and the best and sort of, and, you know, acquire you guys. Um, I, I wonder from a, uh, you know, Joe attendee, right? The average attendee at MJ BizCon, for example, will they notice a difference? Will they, if they don't know this acquisition happen, will they notice a difference or will you notice a difference because of sort of the, the, the manpower behind it um, sort of being more and bigger? You know, well, the hope and the expectation is that if there are any differences, people notice they're good. They're positive, right? <laughs> we're not scaling back. We're not overhauling MJ BizCon. Uh, we're not doubling prices. You know, we're not, doing a lot of the things that people might expect, um, you know, basically they like what they bought, right? They say, you guys are doing a good job and we don't, we, we want to continue doing that and, and enhance it, but not get our fingers all messy in it and ruin what you guys have created. So, you know, as we plan for MJ BizCon, I think for people attending, it's going to feel largely the same, uh, but I don't mean that in a boring way. Like it's the same old, same old. We are going to look in ways that we can do things better, right? Whether that's uh, adding on things that are of more value, whether it's networking, uh, better connecting people, uh, maybe going deeper into certain uh, niche areas in the industry, uh, adding on things, whatever it is, that's what we're going to work with them to do, uh, not only at this MJ BizCon, but going forward. So yeah, no, it's business as usual in that sense with the expectation that we are gonna, um, we're going to make this more valuable for people. 
Uh, there's a funny note. I was looking at the Emeralds website to, to understand sort of their business and your business. And one of the air, one of the verticals that they are big and maybe the biggest is is pizza. Um, I was yes. I was joking that if you could do the MJ Biz with the Pizza <laughs> Expo either end of the the Vegas Convention Center, you'd really there'd be a lot of nice overlap there. You you great minds think alike because I actually brought that up to them too uh, this week and I said, hey, maybe we co-locate these shows. Imagine that. Um, but all jokes aside, the, yeah, they they're they're in you know the pizza business is a massive business, okay. right? We all eat pizza, and you go down the, the grocery store aisle, and there's a million of them. Um, but that's what they do in, in these other you know industries. That same type of thing, bringing business people together, and that's one of their. They they tell me that's a really fun show, and everyone in the company wants to go to it. That's gonna. I think cannabis might usurp them in terms of you know what's what's the more exciting show and where do people want to go? But yeah, but but it, it, then it was, I was joking with some of that exact joke. But then then I was thinking about you know there are lots of lots of pizza shops and they are varied within them. There are lots of inputs to pizza that you don't actually think about. There's lots of specialized equipment. Like yeah, it right. actually had me thinking about the parallels between the two sectors in ways that I actually haven't thought before. I mean, it started as a joke, but. But they're actually making actually parallels. Packaging, equipment, yeah, all all the a lot of the same things you'd you'd need here. Ingredients, you know, marketing. Uh, can, can I ask you a question that did come up uh, sort of in the Twitter sphere? I saw Deborah Borshat from uh, Green Market Report uh, question or ask a question about sort of the 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 news component of MJ Biz, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to sort of respond to that outside of Twitter as well. But talk a little bit about sort of how you see that going forward as well, because I know that's that's one of the things that that caught interest on Twitter as it relates, not that Twitter is a big deal, but, but how, how, how it will impact sort of the news division as well. I'm glad you brought it up because uh, it surprised me that that's where we got a lot of uh, questions. And, it, and I think it's great because it shows that people do value what we're doing with content and that our journalism focus and uh, objectivity and analysis, and that they want that to stay. That's a, I think that's a nice reinforcement of what we built and what, what we've tried to do for, t you know, 10 years. Um, and yeah, it's a valid question. I mean, we got it from our own staff, right? They're like, are we going to be doing fluff pieces or, um, and the answer is, is no. I mean, they, they have said publicly Emerald that they highly value our content backbone and that we can actually, they're hoping that we can actually help them and other divisions, uh, do what we do for the cannabis industry because they see the value that it provides to an industry and connects with an event. Um, so you know, no, they 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 are, are really impressed with what we do on that end and want us to continue doing it. And and that's my background. You know, I helped create the whole content strategy and and how we were going to do this thing over the years. And I came from journalism. Um, so it's really close to me. Uh, and, um, you know, we're we're on the same page with Emerald about the value of this. So valid questions. Absolutely. Uh, but we don't plan to change that. Good. Um, uh, thinking about the back half of this year. Um, like are people gearing up with excitement for, um, for, for, for MJ biz 2022? Yeah. I mean, you know, our, our work begins right. Uh, even before the previous year's event. So, uh, but then start really starts kicking into gear. So, you know, everything that we're hearing so far, um, is, is excitement for a more normalized world back then for, mm -hmm. for events. And so, you know, our uh, our exhibitors are lining up and beginning to select their space and putting down deposits, huge interest there. We're hoping the international element comes back after uh, the difficulties of last year's um, on that end. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're putting together our content and, 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 and a bigger picture strategy for this. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think people are excited and, and we're, um, we're ready to roll and hopefully the coronavirus, we won't have an Om Omicron or whatever. Whatever the next Greek letter is. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. We're going to end the Greek letters at Omicron, if that's okay. Yeah, let's let's stop it there. That's right. Well, uh, well, uh, thank you for making time. Congratulations to you, the team. It's it's good to talk to good people doing good things that have had great success. So congratulations to you and the team. We'll connect with you uh, down the road, if not in Vegas at the end of the year. Thank you very much. Appreciate being on. And be on the lookout for more uh, M and A activity across the board this year. It's gonna it's gonna be a big year for that. It's, it's gonna be wild, and you guys have been covering that really well. So kudos on that front too. Thanks, Chris. We'll see you soon. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. That was Chris Walsh, CEO of MJ Biz. If you like this program, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you heard the show. It helps support the work we do. We're able to do what we do because of ongoing partnerships with Alterna Savings, Cannabis at Work. 
Cannabis Benchmarks, Ken Delta, Gallagher, Headset, and Torquing Man. Find out all that we do at businessofcannabis.com.